why do you think some arguments and relationships just keep on going? Well, these are cognitive distortions. The simplest way to keep an argument going and to avoid looking at what's going on underneath everything in the relationship is to distort the reality of what's happening. You can fuel the fire and heat up the conversation. Arguments become more about arguing than about the issue. You start having an argument for argument's sake, and the goal there is to prove who's wrong. Cognitive distortion is popular psychobabble for just twisted thinking. The term encompasses anything and everything humans do to skew reality to their preferred version of the truth. In an argument, cognitive distortions are the methods you use to filter conversations and arrive at your own idiosyncratic interpretation. And you can also use them outside of an argument to fuel negative thinking and sensitize triggers to get ready for the next fight. See whether like, like, like a biased explanation. This is a bit like mind reading, but slightly more sophisticated because psychoanalysis now kind of complements your ability to read minds. The reason you said this or felt this was because of some ex explanation. Those explanations might exist for your partner's behavior, but you choose the one that backs up your argument. You could also exaggerate. You can say, you always do this. You never do that. I've done it hundreds of times. You left me waiting for nearly an hour. Cost a hundred bucks. I got soaked to the boom, right? These exaggerations are okay if you're embellishing a story for dramatic effect and entertainment, but if you're exaggerating to win an argument, you're helping nobody. Ultimately, the truth tends to come out and then you're left without a leg to stand on and your integrity is in tatters. If you use generalizing statements like everybody says or everybody knows or everybody does this, these are ways of backing up your arguments with generalizations that have little relevance to your personal situation. You might use generalizations to defend yourself from an attack or in an attempt to prove that you're entitled to your feelings. Like you could say something like, anybody would be angry if you did that. Now you can also do mind reading. I know you said that, but you really meant something else. Oddly, people consider themselves to be fantastic mind readers when they're talking about their partner's negative thinking, but rarely, rarely when you're thinking about nice things. Aside from the absolute impossibility of reading your partner's mind, this behavior fuels an argument dramatically as you force the other person into a frustrated defense situation instead of focusing on the issue at hand. You can also polarize stuff when everything is either right or wrong. Did you or didn't you? Yes or no? You allow no shades of gray, only black and white. And there's only one possible conclusion. That's yours. And there's also privileging, bringing only what you want to remember or what you want to hear. Perhaps you only share a part of the story or give a few facts. Privileging means filtering out what you believe as unhelpful extras. They're unhelpful because they don't help you win. This is a really damaging distortion when it includes privileging only the negative things your partner says and excluding all the positive stuff. These cognitive distortions are damaging not only to relationships but to you as an individual. They make finding common ground and reaching resolutions on issues impossible and they feed on your insecurities. Self-awareness is that first step you need for, to overcome a cognitive distortion. You know you're prone to this stuff. You can then monitor your thinking and make a positive decision to stop. It's not easy to do this because a lot of our distortions become habits. But if you're serious about wanting to stop endless arguments, watch your thinking and check to see if it's honest and fair and focused on reconciliation, on dealing with the problem and communicating it, listening and talking. I hope.